Hi, welcome to Under the Piano. Episode 1, starting off with extra layers today, because in New York, at least today, it has gotten significantly colder, and I am not only under the piano, but I'm also (laughs) in a lot of layers, and I brought my throw blanket and pillow (laughs) for the first time. Feels very comfortable here, so I hope you're comfortable topic for the first episode is starting new stuff which is not the most original topic idea ever (laughs) this is my first episode so it's not that crazy that it's the topic of choice i have no concrete plan on how i want to talk on this podcast all i know is that for this episode since i am a pianist i will tell you how I start a new piece of music because I have a recital in Croatia in a few weeks and I'm always trying to think how to explain something in a way that everyone can relate to without dumbing it down. So here's an example of how it is when I learn a new piece. It's very much similar to meeting a new friend or making a new friend. When you meet someone new you are in that honeymoon phase and so this honeymoon phase you are thinking about them a lot without you telling yourself i must think about this person so it's very much like when i learn a new piece i don't tell myself i have to play this in my head right now i just have it randomly pop up in my head you might replay some of the conversations that you've had with this person exactly the same way with music. It's like if you're going to work or going to school, you already know your path from let's say your home or your dorm to school or to work and you don't really need to recognize each street's name when you pass by each street. But in the beginning, when you're new to that route, you kind of need to give yourself those little pins along the way so that you know that you're going in the right way. That's how it is for me when I start a new piece. Should I call them pins? I'm imagining like on a map, you have a pin in certain places. I hope what I've explained so far makes sense. And it's interesting because I know this is something that I get asked a lot, but I could never ever show this on YouTube because it's way too much. I know I tried last year to film myself learning a new piece and documented, but then I have no interest in going back all the hours of footage and then explain to you why I do something in a certain way because it's so analytical and then I would be spending time doing that looking backwards rather than continuing forwards in my present life. Every week I will post the topics and I interact with you on the podcasts. Instagram, so you can go follow Under the Piano Podcast if you want to participate in this Q&A for future episodes. So first one, I start feel oh, I thought of this <laughs> weird analogy yesterday. <laughs> it's like, imagine if your brain is your home. It could also just be your room if you live in a dorm or something, but imagine if your home, every day, There is new furniture coming in, and then some of your furniture goes out the door. You don't really know why, but your home looks different somehow, or something is missing and something's coming in every day. And you're just standing there looking at all the things coming in and out, and you feel like you don't have any control for what goes out and what comes in. It's just kind of like... Uh, what is going on with my home that's a little bit what was going on in my brain what has been going on actually working on projects and goals where i don't have complete control over like i don't know when someone is going to come in with something (laughs) i needed a sense of or needed to do something for myself and making a concert program with two big new pieces one of them is what I've been talking about, Schumann's Christ Lariana, and the other is the Beethoven Sonata in A, Opus 2, Number 2. By doing this, I at least can keep one 
piece of furniture in this metaphorical home of mine. My home is fine. There's nothing weird <laughs> about it. Nothing is disappearing without my control. I'm not getting any surprise gifts or anything, but in this metaphorical home, I at least have this one thing that I have control over, which is my learning of music and playing the piano. And yes, thank goodness, <laughs> this time is still safe and secure and not going anywhere in my apartment. Starting new stuff reminded you also of having self-confidence as a classical musician with a dejected emoji. This is something that I still struggle with. I don't know if it's as a classical musician, but more as a person. Someone asked for tips on making learning new repertoire more efficient. Um, someone said, learning new stuff can be quite challenging for me. Sometimes it feels like there's so much to learn slash discover that I get a bit scared or frustrated. Can you relate in any way? Um, okay, feeling like there's so much to learn and discover and feeling scared or frustrated. I can relate to this not so much as in so much to learn and discover, but I will say that there has been a lot of things that I want to achieve, but... Going back to the mysterious room that just has furniture going in and out without your control. There's a lot that I want to achieve and I am not able to achieve at the pace or in the way that I want. So then I get overwhelmed because there's a lot of things that I want to do. Starting new stuff versus finishing old stuff. And then another comment which very much relates to this, and I thought of this also. You think about if it's actually new. I think it's an interesting question. What is actually new? I feel like I'm never finished with old stuff either, though. Someone asked how to overcome the threshold of doubts, insecurities, and procrastination that exist, for me at least, in front of every new journey. Someone else wrote having the courage to change and to try. Someone else wrote getting over the hurdle of just starting as I do give up before starting sometimes if I feel it's too out of my league. Another person said inconstancy and perfectionism. I feel that I always have to delete everything I'm working on if not satisfied with it until the process feels easy and self-evident. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that you want to strive for something that's either perfect or whatever perfect means for you or that you feel like you have reached a certain level of quality or comfort that you expect to have in this new thing that you want to try or new journey something is always old and not in a negative sense but something is familiar to you something has to be familiar to you just because you have been living on earth for a while and so for me with this podcast even though i know nothing about podcasting i do know a few things that's related if you didn't know i have actually had a podcast for a while but it's under my nonprofit to get with classicals page you can find it on spotify and on youtube called classical chats also thought back on how it is when i talk to a really good friend of mine and how easy it is for the conversation to go for over an hour long. Before I even thought about recording this under the piano or calling it under the piano, I knew that I wanted it to be cozy and I know how it feels to talk to a friend. So I took those elements and focused on those elements and just basically decided, okay, I'm just gonna pick up the microphone. I'm gonna ramble like I always do whenever I'm on a call with really good friends of mine. This hopefully will feel like I am talking to you on the phone. It's behind you. Behind you. It's behind you. Do you not see it? It's right there. Come on. Yay. 